तनु मनीषम शंकर नाद तनु मनीषम शंकर नाद तनु मनीषम शंकर नमा मे मनसा शिरस नाद तनु मनीषम शंकर नमा मे मनसा शिरस नाद तनु मनीषम मोद कर निगमोतम साम वेद सारम वार नाद तनु मनीषम सत्यो जाता पंचवक्रज सत्यो जाता पंचवक्रज सरे गम पदनी वर सप्त स्वर सत्यो जाता पंचवक्रज सरी गम पदनी वर सप्त स्वर विद्यालोलम सरी गम पदनी वर सप्त स्वर विद्यालोलम विदलित कालम विमल हृदय त्यागराजपाल नाद तनु मनीषम शंकर नमा मे मनसा शिरस नाद तनु मनीषम Namaste. I'm happy to welcome you to this course on appreciating Carnatic music. We are here in the beautiful campus of IIT Madras in the Durga Piliyam and Temple, which is which has its unique ambience situated on, on a small hillock, as it were. The song you just heard. Nadatanum Anisham Shankaram Namami Manasa Shirasa. This is a well known composition in Carnatic music. Many things can be said about this composition. First of all, that it is a Kriti. Kriti is a kind of composition in Carnatic music. We can also say that this Kriti was composed by Tyagaraja, an 18th century poet composer. Avagyakara as we call them. We can say that this composition was in the raga Chittaranjani. Chittaranjani as a raga has certain unique features to it. We can also say that the composition is in Aditala and the graha or the yedup is half matra into the tala cycle. We can say all this and much more about compositions such as this. We will talk about all these concepts during the course and hopefully at the end of this course you will be comfortable with such descriptions. At the level of the text of the composition, it should be obvious to most Indians at least that it is in the language Sanskrit. And it is in praise, it is addressed to Lord Shiva as Shankara, Nadatanam Anisham Shankaram Namami. It is interesting that Tyagaraja refers to Shiva, Shankara, 
as Nada Tanu. Tanu means body. Nada, while it is a very difficult word to translate because it is laden with metaphysical, mystical connotations, it is an esoteric concept almost. For our purposes, Nada can be translated as musical sound. So, to call Shiva Nada Tanu means calling him the embodied musical sound. I chose to begin our course with this composition, partly in keeping with an ancient tradition of beginning any new venture with a prayer. And this song, this Kriti is particularly apt because it is in praise of Shiva as the embodiment of Nada or musical sound. It is also significant and interesting that the composition, these concepts in the composition echo similar ideas, similar concepts found across centuries across the country from Kalidasa to Abhinavagupta, the 10th century Kashmiri philosopher, aesthetician, to Sharangadeva, the 12th century musicologist. In fact, Sharangadeva, who also was of Kashmiri origin, but who lived in the Deccan, Deccan region, Sharangadeva in his very, very famous work, Sangeeta Ratnakara, he begins this work with a mangalacharan, with a prayer, in which he uses almost the same terms. The last line of the mangalacharan of Sharangadeva in Sangeet Ratnakara is Vande Nada Tanum Tamudhu Rajagat Geetam Mude Shankaram. And it is interesting that six centuries later, in Tanjavur, Tyagaraja uses almost the same identical expressions. Nadatanam, Anisham, Shankaram, Namami. Such ideas and such concepts were transmitted through a process of osmosis because there is no evidence to suggest that Tyagaraja actually had read the Sangeeta Ratnakara or the Abhinavaguptas, any of Abhinavaguptas' works. The other reason that I thought this composition is a good starting point for us is that there is this explicit reference to the Saptaswaras, the seven notes. Sarigama Padani Parasaptaswara. And it is with these Saptaswaras, the seven notes, that our journey begins. What is the basic working material for a musician? For a painter, for instance, it is colors, lines. For a poet, it's words, sentences. For a sculptor, it is, it could be stone or wood. For an, for a, an architect, it could be bricks. For musician, for a musician, yes, it is notes or swaras. It has been observed by many, and rightly so, that. As far as musical material goes, these swaras, these notes, these are, these find use only in the activity of music, unlike the material of other art forms. For instance, a poet uses words, but a non-poet, like for instance I, I am also using words and this is not a poetic activity. We use tones for other purposes than sculpting, but swaras, notes, are used only for music making. So as far as material goes, musical material is unique to music. This is uh, an interesting aspect of the art of music. And it is these seven swaras that form the basis for the bewildering variety of music that we hear today. Whether it is the music of MS Subbalakshmi, or Bhim Sen Joshi or Pavarotti, whether it is Rahman's Jeho or Adil's Skyfall, all this variety of music that we hear today, all of it stems from just the seven swaras. 
and this variety is due to the difference in how these notes are treated, how they are handled. Sure, there are other factors that make for the difference between different genres of music. Rhythm, for instance, plays a very important part in uh, the identity of a musical genre. But certainly, in stylized musical forms like Carnatic or Hindustani music or opera music, it is the handling of the notes that is fundamentally responsible for the identity of that musical form. More about this musical material, the Swaras, in our next.